Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about a TDS and the TDSX file. TDS stands for Tableau Data Source File, and the TDSX stands for a Packaged Tableau Data Source File. And essentially, these two files are essentially the same. The first one just contains metadata about your data source, and the second one contains the data and the metadata for your data source. They become really useful when you keep connecting to the same data source again and again. For example, when you open up Tableau and you use Superstore Sales here on the bottom left hand side, when I click on that, that's actually opening a TDS file and that TDS file contains information about this particular data source, which is actually an Excel file on my machine. But notice it also carries metadata. For example, it has hierarchies. It has information about the fields. It also has things like data types baked in. So this is a really, really good way of saving time if you're connecting the same data source again and again. Okay, let's find out how to build one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close Superstore Sales here and we're just gonna go back to the beginning by clicking the Tableau icon so we basically reset our field. Now, the key thing to remember with the Tableau data source file is you need to do some initial prep when you first open up the data source. So to show you this, I'm gonna open up a Postgres database that's running locally on my laptop. If I just type in my password here and connect, what we will see is you get a bit of information about what's in the database essentially. And in this particular instance, what you do is you'd bring in some tables. In this case, I'll bring in categories and I'll also bring in the products table as well. And Tableau will try and create a relationship uh, between those two tables. Typically it gets it right. So category ID from the categories table and category ID from the products table relate. So it's made that relationship for me, which is great. I'll click close and that's immediately the first bit of information that I'd like to keep every single time I open up this sort of connection. Now, if I go into the sheet and I actually start working with this data source, what I'll do is I'll take an extract very quickly just so this is a little bit faster to work with. Let me just create an extract and I'll put this um, in the same file as we are basically creating um, all this information. So let me just save this in our Tableau file types directory that I've got here. And you'll see that it actually creates that hyper file over here next to our other files that I showed you at the very beginning. Now, if I go back, one of the other things I can do is I can start to create some context in this data source. For example, the unit price is actually a currency um, uh, data type. So if I just go to the number format and I select currency uh, custom in this particular case, I know I'm gonna go for thousands here and keep it to one decimal place and click okay. When I drag unit price onto rows, you'll see that it keeps that formatting on the axis for me, which is obviously a great thing to do. Now, let me drag that back out the other thing I'd like to do is build in a hierarchy here with the category and the product. So I'll click on category. On the Mac, I'll hold command. On Windows, it's control. And I'll select product name. So it select, selects both items. And then what I'll do is I'll right click on one of the items, then go to hierarchy and create a hierarchy. What this does is essentially creates a relationship between the two fields that allows me to use it like a hierarchy in a table that you can expand and collapse as you, as you so fit. So let me call this a product hierarchy. My spelling is awful, by the way. So if there's any typos, I apologize. I'm not going to try and fix them in this video. Otherwise, it will take too long. Um, so here we have category name and product name. And if I actually just drag category name onto uh, rows here and I just click plus, then you'll see that the hierarchy works. It collapses and expands. So we've got some information now in our data source that we like to make sure is available every single time. How do we create a TDS file? Well, the first thing to do is to just right click on the data source. And if you go down here, there's an option to add to save data source. Now, when you actually click on this, it opens up the directory where all the current saved data sources are saved. And you'll notice a couple of things. There's actually a folder for each version of Tableau you have on your machine. I have several, so I have several folders. And you can notice here, if I go into the 2020.3 folder, you'll notice that I have an American and an English file. And if I go to the English file, which is my version of Tableau, you'll notice that this is actually the home of where the Superstore sales data lives. This information here is actually exactly the same, if I click cancel, as what I see here on the bottom left-hand side. So these data sources are actually coming from that directory. So if you go back by clicking the Tableau icon, right-click, and we simply save it somewhere else, then we actually have that file that we can use in our own uh, development purposes. So let's go to the desktop and I'm actually gonna save it in here and I'm gonna call it categories plus Postgres because it's essentially the table that I'm connecting to plus the database. And you can see here that the file type is a TDS. To create a TDSX file, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, you'll see that this is just a drop down option here. So let's create a TDS file, let's hit save 
Uh, we're going to replace the fathers in there because we created this um, in the previous sort of run of this tutorial. And once that's done, you'll see that the file is pretty much there. There we go. Categories um, plus postgres.tds. Now, essentially what a TDS is, is an XML file containing information about that data source. You can actually open this in a code editor. If I just quickly do that and show you, if I just, in fact, uh, bring up a VS code. So let me just search... Um, Visual Studio Code here, and I'm just going to open that and bring that onto the screen so you can you can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of resize this here. So it'll take a little bit of time, but it's worth just showing you how this works. And if I simply just drag the TDS file into VS Code, it opens it and understands that it's XML. And you can see here that it contains information about my data source. It contains all the metadata about my data source. So I can actually use this, for example. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, power users use this to change the metadata of their data, like a connection information and so on and so forth. But it's actually all available here. So that's essentially all a TDS file is an XML file that does several things. It maintains um, data sources. It maintains uh, settings that you've put into the data source itself, like groups, hierarchies, and so on and so forth. Now, when you use a TDS file, it's slightly different. So let's uh, close this and um, let's close this connection here that we've just created. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you open a TDS file, okay? The first way to open it, and I think is the best way, is to simply drag it into Tableau because what this does is it opens that data source in the current workbook. Let me show you. I'm gonna to connect to Superstore Sales over here, okay? So that will be our first data source connection. Then I'm gonna to go to my TDS file and I'm gonna drag it in and watch what happens. When I drag it into this workbook, it creates a second connection at the top. So if you want to bring in that data source into this connection, that's the best way to do that. And notice that it's maintained the hierarchy that I created previously. And if I drag unit price onto rows, it's also kept the formatting, the number formatting that we created on this field. Okay. And if I go in and I edit this data source, because the TDS only contains metadata about my data source, I can still go in and edit those relationships. So it's a great starting point for making sure everything's in the right place. And you can still go in and edit that information if you need to. So it's a really, really powerful way of speeding up your workflow and making it efficient and easy for others to use the same data sources as you use. The last thing to show you is how to create a packaged Tableau data source file. Essentially, all that is is the exact same file plus the data that goes with it. So if I wanted to share some information with someone who doesn't have access to the data source, what I would do is I would create a package data source um, file that they can then use. And the powerful thing here is that it also maintains information about the original source of the data source. So if that person then gets access further down the line, that they can open that themselves and start working with it. But until they do, you simply create another alternative that they can work with. So this file is slightly bigger. So let me just call this package. So it's obvious to see when we save it in our directory. Let's hit save. And if I just go back here, you'll see that it's this icon here. So I actually created one yesterday. So these two files here are packaged data source files, okay? And the best way to show you this is actually if I just go to the file sizes, okay? So if I go here, you can see that these two, um, this file, if I just delete the hyper file because we don't need this anymore, um, you see that this is um, 34 kilobytes. <laughs> Interestingly, the packaged data source file is actually bizarrely smaller. So there's obviously some compression going on here because the packaged data source file is actually a zip file. So if I was to, and my, my hunch is if I actually compress this, then we'll get a fair reflection of how much bigger it actually is. So you see, um, what a what a TDSX does is it actually takes the uh, hyper file and the TDS and compresses it into a zip file. So if you actually opened it with a zip file manager, you'd see the two files in there. And so by compressing this TDS file, I'm actually getting a fair reflection of how different the two files are. So this is four kilobytes when it's compressed. And um, if I actually go to the package one, it's 12, okay? So that's pretty much a TDS and a TDS, TDS X file. So it's a bit of a tongue twister, uh, but um, that's pretty much how they work. Um, if you haven't already checked it out, check out my other video on Tableau bookmarks. I released that just yesterday uh, and it's part of a series on file types that I'm hopefully gonna be finishing uh, later on this week. Um, so thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, uh, be sure to share it, be sure to include it in your COE and share it with people who might find it useful. Uh, do whatever YouTube has asked you to do, like, subscribe, whatever. And if you don't like it, of course, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see instead. And I'll catch you in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching.